hold them accountable. And uh, the United States is uh, proud to lead the coalition. Are you saying you want him dead or alive, sir? Can I interpret your I just remember, I'm, all I'm doing is remembering when I was a kid. I remember that uh, they used to put out there in the Old West a, a wanted poster. It said, wanted, dead, or alive. All I want, America wants him brought to justice. That's what we want. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. President Bush uh, visiting the Pentagon, getting briefed there on plans to call up the reserves and the Guard, speaking with some personal passion about his determination to go after the people responsible for last Tuesday's attacks. We heard the president uh, say uh, this, these are people who want to destroy America's freedoms. He said we are not going to allow ourselves to be terrorized by someone hiding in a cave. And there at the end, in a fairly remarkable comment, the president, when he was asked, uh, do we want to go after Osama bin Laden, he said, we want justice. But then he went on to recall the old, uh, that poster, as he said, in the old west of the United States, the poster wanted dead or alive, which frankly leaves it somewhat up in the air about what the, uh, the mission of the United States is. The president is at the Pentagon to be briefed on uh, plans to call up the reserves. He did say that they are looking at at least 35,000 troops being called up to do everything from maintain air defenses, check shipping, help the military with airlift uh, and logistics. This is the president meeting with employees at the Pentagon. He said uh, the reserves would provide military police support. They would get involved in engineering projects. They would gather intelligence. And he said they would even serve as chaplains in the military. The president today underlining his determination not to let what happened last Tuesday stand. And the president preparing the American people for sacrifice, saying this effort does not come without a high cost. White House correspondent Major Garrett uh, listening to the president. Major, um, the president injects a personal feeling into what he's saying. He's not just stating government policy here. No, he's not, Judy. And it's worth remembering that this entire crisis has affected this president so personally, probably no more so than it did on Friday when he was in New York. He surveyed the damage, and then after surveying the damage, he spent three hours in the Jacob Javits Center meeting relatives of firefighters and policemen killed in the World Trade Towers collapse. That meeting was only scheduled for an hour and a half. He spent a full three hours there. His senior aides were so overcome with emotion, they had to keep leaving the room. They couldn't take it. But the president was there for every moment. It has been described afterwards by senior aides as a transforming event for the president. He does take this very personally. He knows he has to prepare the country for war. He feels it viscerally himself, a deep sense of outrage and a deep commitment to pursue not only, as he said, Osama bin Laden, but the wider net, the wider matrix of terrorists around the world. And among the remarks that you didn't highlight was one he said it's going to take a lot of patience from the American people, a lot more than they're probably imagining right now. It's a very careful and calibrated effort on the part of the administration to harness and channel this overwhelming public support the president has received. His popularity rating, his approval rating now standing at 86 percent. They want to channel that and harness that popularity, not only for what may come now in the near term, but obviously the longer term elements of this campaign against global terrorism. Major, I was struck that the president uh, made a point of characterizing, uh, took some pains to characterize these terrorists. He did talk about Osama bin Laden, but he made it clear it's not limited to him. He talked about uh, going after anyone who provided comfort, food, aid of any sort, financial aid to, uh, to the bin Laden network. And then he went on to talk about this is a different type of, a, of an enemy. He said, in the past, we've gone after beaches. We've tried to uh, uh, capture islands. He said, these are people who like to hide and burrow in. He went on to say they don't, uh, they don't follow ordinary conventional rules. They slit the throats of women on airplanes. Now, that's a reference 
to what we believe happened on one or more of those airplanes last Tuesday when uh, the hijackers literally slit the throats, we believe, of the airline attendants and perhaps passengers. All of those gruesome details becoming more a part of the horrific story of the events on Tuesday. Details the president is latching onto and sharing with the American public in a very emphatic way. Not, I don't think, to stir them up or to create any froth. It would be hard to create any more froth than there already is, any more sense of outrage, but to try to suggest and typify the kind of behavior and the kind of actions the United States is up against when it combats terrorists of this kind. All right, Major Garrett, and again, uh, we've just been watching pictures of President Bush uh, at the Pentagon in the last few hours, getting briefed, also meeting with uh, military and civilian employees there. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, an update on the investigation into last Tuesday's attacks. Also, a briefing from the Justice Department. We'll be right back. The thousands of individuals who are living secret lives waiting to be summoned to cause some terrible act of destruction, that network has to be taken apart and destroyed. We're going to need to work with our friends and allies around the world. It's going to put stress on the relations between states. And then, if there are states sponsoring this international terror, we're going to announce them, announce to them they've got to renounce it, they've got to work with us. And if they don't, then they will become our adversaries and we will go after those states as well, I'm sure. With the kind of deals we have here in Gateway Country, we don't need gimmicks to get you in the store. Right now, we'll give you this Epson Stylus printer free when you buy any Gateway Essential PC. This is the Gateway Essential 950C featuring the Intel Celeron processor. It's only $7.99. That's why I say we don't... We don't need gimmicks! Really? Offer ends September 23rd, so stop by soon or call 1-800-GATEWAY. This is a complete broadband solution with a nitro-powered on switch. This is igniting your mission-critical applications on the fattest optical IP pipe on the planet. This is your business, screaming a thousand times faster than yesterday. This is moving beyond connected. This is riding the light. This is the technology that makes it happen. Quest. Ride the light. Refinancing your mortgage may be easier than you think. Just log on to Ditech.com or call 1-800-71-FIX. Today's low fixed rate with zero points is only 6.750%. With interest rates lower, now may be a great time to get cash or use the equity in your home to consolidate bills. It's smart money from Ditech.com. Apply online or call us at 1-800-71-FIX. Morning, guys. Hi. Hey, morning. Like to see how your cereals stack up the total? Sure. To get sure. the iron in one bowl of total, you'll have to eat two bowls of cornflakes. For folic acid, try four bowls. That's a really big spoon. Want zinc? Ten bowls for you. What's so funny? Uh, nothing, nothing. Nice bowls. Total has 100% of 11 vitamins and minerals in just one bowl. We'll take the total. Sure. And give Junior the check. What? Total, total raisin bran, total cornflakes. One bowl, 100%. Here in New York, we continue to watch the stock market numbers, the Dow down 530 points, it looks like to me. Uh, it's been sort of moving in a range over the last hour or so. Uh, in Washington, the focus continues to be on the investigation. More progress made overnight. CNN National Correspondent Eileen O'Connor, part of the team covering that story, joins us now with some detail as we wait, and it may come very quickly, uh, for the Attorney General's briefing. There it is, Attorney General John Ashcroft. Eileen, we'll get back to you. Thank you. The investigation into Tuesday's attack is still moving vigorously. I want to express my appreciation to the thousands of agents and support staff of the Federal Bureau of Investigation 
who are literally working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, following leads in the investigation. Their work has been excellent. I join the American people in thanking them for their dedication to the country. The number of tips and potential leads coming into the FBI has been very substantial. We've received helpful leads from both the 1-800 number and the website, and are grateful for the American people and their participation in this investigation. To date, to date the hotline has received more than 7,700 phone calls. The website, 47,000 potential leads. Let me repeat, those two resources are important for us and for the for the public, any member of the public that has information that may be helpful to the investigation, please call 1-866-483-5137. The toll-free calling number is 1-866-483-5137. Or you can reach us at the internet at www.com ifbccfbi.gov. In an effort to assist the FBI with manpower, I have directed the U.S. Marshals Service to assign more than 300 deputy marshals to provide needed assistance to FBI field offices. These deputy marshals will be assigned to the various locations across the country to augment and enhance the ongoing investigation and the responsibility we have. While the FBI has always had a law enforcement presence in the air, the Department of Transportation has decided to expand our country's law enforcement capacities in that respect. Each day as flights increase, we will be adding additional enforcement officials from the Department of Justice as air marshals on planes in addition to the already heightened security on the ground in airports. These additional law enforcement officials from various federal agencies are being assigned to the FAA to ensure aircraft passenger safety. Yesterday, I met with several members of the House and Senate leadership, including the leadership of the Intelligence and Judiciary Committees. FBI Director Mueller and I discussed with them the current threat assessment, including our belief that associates of the hijackers that have ties to terrorist organizations may be a continuing presence in the United States. This threat assessment has helped us to identify several areas where we should strengthen our laws to increase the ability of the Department of Justice and its component agencies to identify, prevent, and punish terrorism. The meetings we had were very productive, and I'm optimistic that we will be able to act quickly to provide law enforcement with the additional tools that are necessary to fight terrorism. I was encouraged by the members' support and their pledge to work as members of the Congress with the Department of Justice to move this agenda of anti-terrorism legislation forward. In the next few days, we intend to finalize a package of legislative members, measures pardon me, that will be comprehensive. Areas covered include criminal justice, immigration, intelligence gathering, and financial infrastructure. And while the final details are still being discussed, I can highlight a few of the items that we will address in the proposal. Under intelligence gathering, we want to provide additional tools to collect intelligence on terrorists including expanded electronic surveillance, search authority, and the ability to identify, seize, and forfeit terrorist assets. 
two specific changes we have proposed include. First, current law requires us to obtain a wiretap 